As you will have hopefully seen in a previous video, Cannondale has released the fourth generation of its Super 6 Evo platform. Now, one of the most exciting models within this new lineup is the top of the range Lab 71 model. And the reason why it does sit at the top of the range is because it's built using a brand new layup of carbon fiber, which Cannondale claims is lighter than anything they've ever used before. Of course, as you would expect from a range topping bike, it is shod in all of the trappings one would expect to see on a bike that costs twelve and a half thousand pounds. But this bike also boasts of a couple of features, which means it lines itself up directly against one of the titans of the industry, the giant Propel. So let's jump into this little game of top trumps to see which one comes out on top. First off, let's start with those similarities. Both weigh 6.8 kilos in matching sizes. Cannondale achieved this by changing the carbon fiber layup, while Giant achieved the same result by slimming down the tubes and fitting some pretty swanky wheels. Both bikes were created with the same vision, to be do-it-all race bikes. Now, these bikes should feel at home on both the hilly days and the flat ones. It's true to say that the Super 6 has a history of being a climbing bike and the Propel as an aero machine, but they both certainly evolved from being specialists. The final similarity which I'll highlight is that both bikes have aero water bottles designed specifically for them. Of course, being top of the range bikes, both have Shimano Durace Di2 group sets fitted, but that's where it ends. So now it's time to pull these bikes apart and delve into the nuances between them and try and work out on paper at least, which really is best. We'll start off with a nice and easy one. Price, the stone cold cash. The Cannondale here in the UK comes in at 12 and a half thousand pounds, while the Propel comes in at 11,999 pounds, a difference of 501 pounds. Sure, that is a fair bit of cash and it could be used to buy yourself a lovely Garmin head unit. However, a customer who's actually looking at either of these bikes probably isn't going to care too much about that amount of price difference and arguably just cares about having the best. So let's continue with the comparisons. This is a big one. The wheels are without a doubt the single biggest differentiating factor between these two bikes. And the differences are quite stark. In the giant corner, we have the Kadex Ultra 50 wheels, which feature a 22.4 mil internal width rim with aero carbon bladed straight pull spokes. To top off all of this plushness, the hubs have ceramic bearings for maximum smoothness. The wheels come in at a featherlight 1,349 grams, which is remarkable for wheels that are 50 millimeters deep. Over in the Cannondale corner, we have the brand new RSL 50 wheels, which are made up of a hooked 50 millimeter deep, 21 mil internal rim width rim, and those are then laced onto a hologram hub with DT Swiss 240 internals using DT Swiss AeroLite straight pull spokes. Currently, Cannondale have not made a claim for the weight of the wheels, but purely looking at the spec sheets, it's hard to imagine that the holograms would be significantly lighter than the Kdexes. By simply looking at the details of the rim, I would certainly opt for the wider hookless Kdexes. They'll have a lower rolling resistance when set up at the right pressure, and they'll be more comfortable and provide more grip. In my eyes, they embody what one should come to expect from a range topping bike. A lot of the bikes that are being offered today do seem to be coming out with a threaded bottom bracket, but clearly there are still some that are hanging on to the press fit system, the Propel being one of them. I don't want this conversation to turn into a press fit versus threaded argument. If you are a regular viewer of the channel, you will know which side of the fence I sit on. The key difference on this occasion is that the Propel utilizes a standard Shimano push fit unit, while the Cannondale enjoys the plushness of a silky smooth ceramic speed bottom bracket. It. it really is an easy win for the Super 6 here, as this represents a clear upgrade and something which one should expect from a range topping bike. Giant is the biggest bicycle manufacturer in the world. The vast swathe of power that the biggest brands enjoy gives them the ability to spec all of their bikes with in-house finishing kit. 
saddles included. This is why you'll find a fleet SLR carbon rail saddle on the Propel. Not a bad offering by any means. The Super 6 spins a slightly different web. It offers a Physique Vento Argo 00 saddle, and I can tell you firsthand from riding this very saddle on my own bike just how good it is. The padding is very comfortable, the saddle itself is very light and the surface grip is tremendous and personally the cutout works very well for me and it doesn't create any undue pressure. The Fleet SLR saddle offers a pretty similar list of features. It too is a shorter nose saddle, has a generous pressure relief channel and is pretty light but the attribute which clinches victory in favour of the physique is the grip. You may disagree with me here, but I do very much enjoy being able to find my comfortable spot on the saddle and then not slide around, a trait which is common with saddles that use the same material that the SLR uses. So that's another round to the Super 6, but it was very close. Cannondale announced at the launch of the Super 6 that they would be getting rid of their 60cm frame size and their 62cm frame size, instead combining them into a 61cm frame size to simplify production while still catering to their taller customers. This has meant that the number of sizes that the Super 6 will be offered in has shrunk down to 7, ranging from 44cm to 61 These 7 sizes are actually 3 more than what the Propel is offered in. The Propel is offered in just 4 sizes, small, medium, medium-large and large. When you look at the geometry charts between both bikes, the Propel is essentially missing the two smallest and the largest sizes that the Super 6 is offered in. While Giant may point to their live range of bikes, those being one specifically for females, I'm not sure you'll find too many short men that would opt for this as a viable option. For the tall men out there, the Propel leaves them with no choice at all. Once again, the Super 6 takes the win. The type of customer who is looking to spend in excess of £12,000 also tends to be the type of customer who likes to obsess over their specification, and rightly so. If you're spending that much money, the bike should certainly be exactly what you want with zero compromise. That's why it's great when a manufacturer offers their top-end bike as a frame-only option, enabling you to build it however you wish. At the moment, you can go and buy a Lab 71 Super 6 frame set. You cannot do the same for the Propel. Well, not right now at least. They are expecting frame sets to be available later this year or early next, so I'll declare this one a draw. Even though both bikes claim to only accept 30mm wide tyres, Cannondale does also claim that there would be 6mm of space on either side of the tyre. So to my mind, that means that you could potentially fit 34mm wide rubber. Granted, I'm not too sure many people would actually do this, but in theory, it does mean that you could take the bike on some light gravel or some all-road rides, with pretty minimal bother. The Propel, on the other hand, would only have 4mm of space either side, so a 32 tyre is potentially a possibility. Given the nature of these bikes and their intended use, I don't think that the difference between maybe being able to run a 32 or a 34 warrants declaring one a winner and one a loser. So again, I'm going to call a tie, but you may disagree. There are a few other details which I believe fall into the realms of just being a matter of opinion, and things which you need to make your own mind up about. Firstly, the seat posts. The Cannondale uses a typical seat post setup, which can slide up and down within the frame to set the saddle height. The Propel has an integrated seat post, with the idea being you cut it to size with the benefit resulting in saved weight and improved aero efficiency. The good thing is you can add up to 40mm of spaces to really fine tune the saddle height so you can make changes later down the line or future owners can do the same. Personally, I prefer the conventional setup. The tyres on the Propel are the Kdex Aero tyres, which were specifically designed to be used alongside the Kdex Aero wheels that the Propel Advanced SL0 is built with. 
The Cannondale, on the other hand, opts for a pair of some home favourite Continental GP5000s. Myself and my colleagues are yet to test the KDEX tyres, so it's hard to pass judgement on something we don't have any meaningful experience with. However, the GP5000s represent themselves as being a real fan favourite and leave little to be desired in terms of rolling resistance, comfort and grip. Lastly, the cockpits themselves do slightly differ. Both are carbon and both are integrated, meaning they house all of the hoses inside them. But the bars on the Propel are a separate two-piece setup, while the bars on the Super 6 are a more typical one-piece setup. Personally, if I'm going to go down the route of carbon integrated bars, I think I'd just go for the all-in-one for maximum visual impact. Obviously, I want it to look cool, and I do think the new bars on the Lab 71 Super 6 do look especially cool. What's the takeaway here then? Clearly, on the face of it, if you took the full Lab 71 Super 6 build and then switched in the Kdex wheels, you'd have an absolute belter of a bike. That really would be something quite remarkable. The Kdex Ultra 50 wheels, which are found on the Propel, were designed and created alongside it, so they should perform best within that frame set, but I'm sure you'd still get the same benefits in the Lab 71. From a shallow aesthetic point of view, I think the KDEX wheels also do just look better than the holograms, and Giant has done a pretty decent job of giving KDEX its own brand identity, meaning they don't look out of place when they're fitted to anything other than a Giant. While on paper the Lab 71 may have won this little head-to-head, -head, in my eyes, you may disagree. I think the real winner is us, the customers. The fact that we have such great options available is a real privilege. And as mentioned, we can go out and purchase these bikes as frame sets and then build them up as we wish and absolutely nail the specification as we like. One key metric that I stayed away from was what the bikes are like to ride. That too will be a matter of opinion. We're yet to test both bikes, so I'll reserve judgment on that side of things for a future video. Do let me know though down below which bike won in your eyes and which would you go for. If you enjoyed the video then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content and I'll see you again very soon.